Hello, how are you guys doing today? This is Brayton, and today's video is going over shedding and anergenic alopecia, and what is the difference, how to tell if you are shedding, or you're going through anergenic alopecia, also known as male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness. And today we're just going to go over the cycles of hair growth and how to tell if you know are going through you know, a normal shed like every other person, everybody sheds, or you are experiencing early signs of male pattern or female pattern baldness. Um, and yeah, and why your hair loss treatments uh, are causing more hair loss, um, why that occurs, like the mechanism behind that, and, you know, kind of helping you know, figure out what is going on with your hair. So <laughs> I'll top right on it. So shedding is a very normal and healthy process that everyone goes through. You know, we all kind of know this. Um, you shed around 50 to 100 hairs a day. It's a normal bodily function process, you know, everybody's hair everywhere sheds, you know, so, you know. Obviously, you shouldn't be worried about shedding first off in the first place, but when you shed a little bit more than average, then that could be a little worrisome. You, it could be a sign of nutritional deficiencies, or it could be a sign of, you know, telogen effluvium, or it could be even androgenic alopecia. You can't exactly know off rip, you know, what exactly is causing, you know, an extreme amount of shedding than normal. But um, if you are shedding around 50 to 100 hairs, daily or you're just not shedding much hair at all even though you most of the time you are shedding a lot of hair and you just don't really realize it but when you start to notice like i'm having like clumps of hair kind of like fall out pretty commonly well, i want to say clumps but a lot of hair more than normal could be a sign that you are experiencing you know telogen effluvium maybe even energetic alopecia but we'll kind of talk about the main three or four phases here of the hair cycle in general now most of your hairs like on the top of your head are going to be in the antigen phase which is the longest lasting phase and can last up i believe up to 10 years uh and that is the kind of the phase that where your hair is growing and so obviously hair itself is made of just keratin your hair is kind of dead already but um it's still growing in its own aspects here it's made of like proteins yes antigen is the most it's pretty much the best phase here i guess you could say and that's just a sign that our antigen hairs it's the most common it's the phase that you want and things like treatments like minoxidil and finasteride prolong this phase now with minoxidil in general it is going to be prolonging the antigen phase keeping the hair more thick and healthy comparatively if you weren't using minoxidil it would be you know resting usually in the telogen phase or the life cycles of the hair follicle itself would be shorter comparatively you know if you were using minoxidil that is kind of like the mechanism behind minoxidil now with finasteride kind of similar but obviously finasteride and 5 alpha reductase inhibitors are going to stop the uh androgen dht from being converted from testosterone so testosterone converts into dihydrotestosterone through 5 alpha reductase uh, enzyme and so when dihydrotestosterone binds to the hair follicle it causes miniaturization shortening the antigen phase over with time and each time you know the hair goes through its life cycles is they keep getting shorter and shorter and uh so pretty much that's pretty much what antigenic alopecia is is well the hair follicle just slowly just dies off because it is being miniaturized and the hair cycles are shortened uh now if you're using like finasteride and dutasteride for example it will keep the hairs from you know not dying off and keeping them longer in the antigen phase and you know just living longer in general so but obviously when you first start these treatments it actually may cause you know your hairs that are in the telogen phase to go into exocrine gray phase and that's why a lot of people experience a lot of shedding when starting hair loss treatments like minoxidil and finasteride and dutasteride uh it's pretty common uh and so obviously you shouldn't worry about that that's just a sign that your weak hairs are shedding off into uh new strong uh thick hairs i guess you could say so that are not affected by a dihydrotestosterone so yes i guess you could think of it as uh that way <laughs> i guess you could say but anyways we'll get into the next phase here i guess we kind of trailed off we have the catagen phase which is the transitional phase of antigen to telogen and this is like the shortest phase it's only over last around 10 days and Obviously, this is not really that more important comparatively to the, you know, telogen phase, which is like the resting phase. And this is where, you know, most or not most of your hairs, it's like 9% actually um, of your hairs are in this phase right now. And it's just a sign that they're resting. They're not growing. They're about to shed off. And so obviously, this is just an, a normal process of the hair life cycle. It's not bad that hairs are in the telogen phase, but it's not good if most of your hairs are in the telogen phase. So intelligent effluvium usually occurs it is rare but it can occur in people who are experiencing very stressful life events 
um, things like giving birth, for example, or, you know, PTSD, things like that. It can be very, uh, you know, traumatic and hard on the body, and this can cause your hair to go through the, a lot of hairs prematurely shed to the telogen phase and causing, you know, telogen effluvium, which is usually only certain parts of the scalp all over the scalp may cause just, just thinning kind of all over because a lot of hairs are gone. This is an androgenic alopecia, and this is temporary. Your hair will grow back from telogen effluvium. Just give it time. It takes a lot of time. It can take up to, you know, six months even to have those hairs properly grow back. And then this last phase here is the exogen phase, which is like the hair just falling out in general. Um, and this, you know, it's just kind of like a shedding phase <laughs> of the hair follicle itself. And like I said, shedding can last up to two to six months uh, till it properly grows back. Um, you know, your hair starts to go through its antigen phase again. It really just depends, also depends on your just like lifestyle too, on, you know, certain things may cause, you know, premature shedding. Uh, or hair to not properly start into the antigen growth phase again. So that's why, like, obviously you should eat healthy um, and maintain a good diet, um, you know, exercise and stuff like that. And, you know, things like that aren't good for, you know, your lifestyle, like alcohol and or smoking, stuff like that may not be the best for, you know, your hair to properly maintain in the antigen phase or grow properly. So, um, but there are many different factors, environmental factors, genetics that play into this. So, can't just pinpoint one thing and like that and also trails into like different forms of alopecia as well it's not just androgenic alopecia or telogen effluvium uh, that are the main causes of hair loss or the main mo like you know there are other forms like trichotillomania which is like the hair pulling um or uh, traction alopecia too you know there are many forms obviously those are le less common than androgenic alopecia and telogen effluvium but they still occur and uh yeah, obviously, those are going to re require different treatment in general, uh, comparatively to androgenic alopecia. So, obviously, though, you should talk to your doctor um, about these things and or dermatologist. And shedding isn't exactly telogen effluvium. I just like to lump telogen effluvium and with androgenic alopecia together just because visually they look very similar for telogen effluvium. You're losing a lot of hair in a certain area. It's not going to be slick bald. It is more of just like your hair is falling out through the uh, or they're in prematurely put into a telogen phase and they are just kind of falling out rapidly not at all at one time um but they are slowly coming out and that's kind of kind of similar to something like energetic alopecia especially if in a, it's in a certain area and that's where some people can get things like telogen effluvium and androgenic alopecia confused. But like I said, androgenic alopecia falls into a pattern um, for men. It's typically around here. It's called the Norwood scale here. I'm going to put up some graphs. And for women, it's going to be um, more for kind of down the slit in the middle. Um, but it can vary, especially for women and men. It can vary on the patterns here. But for women, obviously, it's a lot rarer to have androgenic alopecia for, you know, dihydrotestosterone levels. And women aren't nearly as high as men, but they can still uh, develop and um, show symptoms of androgenic alopecia. It just depends on the hair follicle and the uh, how genetically prone they are to uh, hair loss or androgenic alopecia. It could just be due to the hair follicle being very sensitive to androgens and it doesn't take much uh you know androgens in general to cause a uh, male pattern baldness especially if you're very genetically prone or sensitive to hair loss so that's why a lot of women experience androgenic alopecia even though that they have like one like one tenth the dihydrotestosterone levels as a male would have so that's why that occurs so why do treatments like finasteride and dutasteride and monoxyl as well um cause premature shedding uh, when they're supposed to prolong the antigen phase and, you know, or keep your hair more thick and keep your hair in general. Um, well, that's because a lot of the hairs that usually if you start something like finasteride or a minoxidil, for example, even though the minoxidil and finasteride mechanism is completely different, minoxidil is going to be, uh, usually if we're going to talk about topically here, there is trying to prolong the antigen phase and keep hairs growing thicker and just kind of keeps it prolonged comparatively to hairs falling prematurely into the telogen phase and staying there if you know you didn't have the minoxidil for example now with finasteride now it is more of cutting off um five alpha reductase activity in the hair follicle itself or the androgen receptor um and keeping the hair from prematurely um going through uh miniaturization so then it slowly just never goes back into that antigen phase 
and phases just keep speeding up and it slowly just kind of dies off and turns into a peeless hair instead of a terminal hair, which is more of like a really thin kind of like peach fuzz, I guess you could say in that aspect. So pretty much why they cause a premature shirt shedding is because, well, these old hairs need to shed off and to grow into thick, new, stronger hairs, growing into a more prolonged antigen phase. A lot of those hairs that were either they were already antigen, they are going to fall into the telogen phase and the exogen, the exogen phase where it sheds off, then it's going to grow back stronger, uh, more healthy, and that antigen phase is going to prolong. So how do you tell if you are experiencing shedding, telogen effluvium, or energetic alopecia in general? How do you figure this out? Well, there, I guess you could say there's a couple tests. You could get a hair catcher or you could put at the bottom of your shower to see how many hairs on date on day on the daily average you are shedding or just like accumulating at the bottom there now obviously you can like pick the hair one by one and count them all if you are you know really that serious about it and you really want to fi find out if you are shedding more than usual and you're losing more hair than an average person and that might be a sign that you have or experiencing energetic alopecia or telogen effluvium um that is a way but obviously it takes a lot of time it can be very tedious and I guess, in my opinion, I've never done anything like that, but I know some anecdotes of people who do do that. And obviously, it is your choice there. Now, another way as well, well, this way has a lot more flaws, is the sides of your head, comparatively to the top of the, your head, like hair pulling test, and seeing if you are losing more hairs on the side of your head, comparatively to the top, or you know, testing density of like the top of the head, comparatively to the side. Now, a lot of people don't have a lot of side hair or um, usually it's really cut very short, which obviously you can't really do that test. And even if you did have like long hair on the sides, this is not always, you know, the most prevalent thing. For example, people with like retrograde alopecia, it is a completely useless test or, you know, diffuse thinning, uh, that don't have a certain pat Norwood pattern. Obviously another, like this test is useless, but I guess for some indiv individuals, I guess they can tell if like, oh, if they're pulling out more hairs on the top of their head, that is might be more thin compared to the side. That could be a sign of energetic alopecia comparatively to more shedding. Or if you are just using a comb in the shower and you use the sides of your head and you notice less hair comparatively to the top that could be another sign as well but obviously it is a very flawed way and you know you can't really just <laughs> you know figure out that you have energetic alopecia from that way itself so figuring out if you have energetic alopecia or you're experiencing shedding isn't as easy as that it takes a decent amount of time it takes you know a lot of either before and after pictures to see if there's any minute changes in your hair especially in the temples or your crown to see if there are changes uh, it, you know, it takes time to see if you are losing more hair in the showers, if you're using a shower catcher, uh, like at the bottom there to count your hairs. It takes time to realize like, okay, I am experiencing energy and alopecia. These things don't happen overnight. It takes a lot of time. And, you know, with treatment, it takes up to months to even see an effect, especially using something like finasteride, even monoxyl as well for, you know, the hair needs to shed off and grow back. And it takes a lot of time for hair to grow properly back from these treatments and even it could take years to have for from something like finasteride or dutasteride and to have its full effect it takes a lot of time for these treatments to work and of course when you're on these treatments it's pretty much lifelong and once the drug or the uh treatment is you're stop you've stopped the treatment or the drug is out of your system you're going to start experiencing you know signs after a while it depends how aggressive aggressive your case of androgenic alopecia is um, but these treatments are pretty much lifelongs. Also, if you just think it is shedding and you just want to shed less on average comparatively, you know, keeping your hair healthy is very important too. So making sure you're not, you know, stripping your hair of, you know, vital oils that it has, uh, you know, keeping it, you know, moisturized, keeping it healthy in general, using the proper shampoo and conditioner that's good for your hair, um, as well as just eating a proper diet, you know, rich in protein, uh, rich in antioxidants and stuff like that. Obviously, these things aren't going to save you from something like energetic alopecia, but you can keep your hair more healthy in general. General. and maybe prolong the energy phase maybe a little longer you never know so but that's just like uh my uh two cents in there so <laughs> so anyways i think that's gonna wrap up my video for today on the difference between energetic alopecia shedding and telogen effluvium uh, and just like the hair cycles and what the treatments do to your hair cycles and why you shed uh when you are on these hair treatments uh for energetic alopecia and you know 
you know, shitting in general. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess that is gonna be it for today. If you guys have any questions or if I missed anything or anything like that, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed, feel free to like. Uh, and yeah, I think that is gonna be it. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. So. <laughs>